getting after it again today. And I cannot wait to see what that looks like at the end of this video. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. <laughs> Funny thing about the paint and body industry is everybody is better than everybody else. Even the ones that have never done it. Nobody here wants to hear about it. Nobody cares. We got that 1956 Mercury Dash all grafted in there, body worked, and in a final primer, along with a custom center console. Today we're gonna wet sand it and paint it. Before we get that far though, we gotta get this glove box working right. We're only on our second attempt. We're not giving up yet. This was our first attempt. Fail. Not every idea is gonna be your best one. So I dug this out of the garbage at work. It's a knee bolster panel from a, from a Ford of some kind. We're gonna to try to make something out of this. I like the bead roll in it. It's obviously a lot lighter than that piece of angle we were using. And I think it'll end up looking a lot better. A lot more finished. A lot more on purpose. We're a bit low on it, but that's all right. I think we can adjust it from there somehow. We'll have to clean up the edges here where we cut it, get it in primer, so that way when we paint the dash, we can paint that too. This setup here is pretty cool. It attaches to any bench grinder, gives you a belt sander. And I made this little ledge on it, and it works out pretty good for me. Except I wish my bench grinder was a little more powerful. This kind of needs a kickstart. It needs a little confidence booster. But don't we all? I mean. That's why we're painting the dash way before we should be. It's okay, little buddy, I get it. Good enough for now, just needs a coat of paint. But that's what we're doing today, painting stuff. I gotta do something about this. Our door is not a table. So this is 600 grit wet paper, wet or dry. So before we paint this stuff, we're gonna wet sand it with that 600 grit. Doing it wet prevents our paper from getting gummed up with the primer and leaves a nice smooth finish, but not so smooth paint won't stick to it. Kind of our last effort into making sure that this is straight and not wavy or pitted or anything like that. So we're gonna be box sanding it just like we did body work. We're just gonna wet sand it until all that guide coat is gone and trying our dang hardest not to sand through the primer. I used a block as a squeegee, kind of see where I'm at. We gotta be careful around the edges. It's really easy to burn through it. Down the middle a little bit right there. But those little spots, We'll just hit it with a little primer before we paint it. On the inside here, I'm just hitting it with a red scuff pad. We'll get it good enough. Put this outside in the sun, let that dry up. There's some stuff up there I've already been working on. We gotta get that down. Bubble shot the jukebox last night. First thing I found was my favorite part of this dash. This, is gauge cluster out of that. I'm super proud of this. I think it turned out awesome. It's the original bezel from that 56 Mercury dash, just modified a lot. So these sections here, they flow up into the dash, then across, and in the Mercury it went into the door with these cool little wing looking pieces, but unfortunately those were gone out of the car that I got this dash out of. Well. At least one was, so I didn't even bother grabbing the other one. Really should have though, because I probably could have found one somewhere, sometime. It would have been really cool to graft them in the top of the doors. So it would flow from the cluster all the way across and into the door. Oh well. So I think what I want to do now 
is this area here where that trim flows down to, we're gonna scuff that up. We wanna protect that area, we don't wanna scratch though. Red Scotch Bright, Red Scotch Bright Pad, Red Scotch Bright Pad, Red Scotch Bright Pad does the trick. And we could paint over that. We're gonna scuff these areas up. We're just gonna knock the shiny off of it. It's already been primed and painted. We don't need to do any priming or anything. Just gotta scuff it up so the paint will stick to it. It's hard to keep things clean in an environment like this, especially when we're trying to paint, but so we gotta keep the dust down. We don't wanna have to wet sand and buff interior parts. I like to put some clean masking paper down and set up the table in a way I can paint everything without stumbling around. So this is an actual automotive 2K paint that I had this paint code mixed up into an aerosol can. GM Arctic White. 66autocolor.com is where I got it. Gave them this paint code WA9567 and they mixed it up for me. If you don't have any experience painting cars or have an air compressor or a gun to do it, this stuff is great. It's a little pricey but you pay for convenience I guess, right? What sucks here, we have a whole can of that white 2K. But we only have those to paint. If I had more of that white, I'd do the dash and council in that too. And then do the red over top of that. Because when I paint this whole truck, we're gonna end up doing a white sealer on it and then spraying it with Viper Red. But I don't. Pretty sure this stuff is good for a day or two after you activate it though. So maybe I can come up with something, something that should be white. I don't know, we'll see. I guess that's one downfall, the convenience of these, huh? All right, we took that button, we popped the activator in the bottom open, released it into the paint. This is not your typical hardware store spray paint. It's some potent stuff. You're gonna want a respirator. Gave that a quick tack coat. We're gonna let that sit for a while. And that gives the next heavy coat something to stick to. I had some tip issues. The dang tip was broke. Did you see that? Lucky that didn't drip all over my gauges here. Can't blame that on, on these guys though because that actually went through the move here and anything that was in that move got beat up, including the truck. I took the tips off one of the Viper Reds that was in the helicopter. I took a tip off one of the other cans. One of the Viper Reds. Like doing circles. Seriously, I'm trying to record in here. Oh, it's the sheriff. I guess that's okay then. All right, game on. I think those drips will be all right. Another full wet coat on there and they'll disappear. So I popped the button into his pin so that way it was popped up in the middle and I can get a little bit more paint in there. And then I realized that button's not gonna be white. It's gonna be red. Don't. What am I doing? We'll just set this aside. That doesn't need any more guys, that looks great. Laid out good, nice and smooth and shiny. 
It's turning out nice. I told you that stuff lays out okay. We have two coats on that and it's looking pretty good. But I got a lot left. I think I'm gonna do a third on that and then put this in the refrigerator and see if I can find anything else that needs to be white. So I think I was wrong. I don't think that'll last a day or two. I think it lasts about eight hours. But maybe we'll buy another eight by putting it in the refrigerator. Maybe a little bit, but eight? I think that third coat really put it over the top. Looks good. I think we'll leave that one. My luck, I dropped that face down in the dirt. This one though, we're gonna bake it in the sun. We are about to make a wet mess of that truck. This dash and that console are getting wet sanded and painted today. Also looking forward to how that turned out. So this is especially important with bodywork, but I always want to be going with the curve rather than against it. Because if we go against it, we risk putting a, like a flat spot all the way along it. We don't want to do that. We want to form it this way. Whew. If you've ever wondered why a paint job is so expensive, now you know. It's a lot of work, a lot of messy work. Not to mention the consumables are expensive and the product is expensive. I need a coffee break. Cool part about this step is that it's the first time you really kind of get a glimpse of what it's going to look like. Because you're really smoothing it out. And when it gets wet, it obviously gets shiny and it'll give you a glimpse of what the paint's going to look like. So you can really see where you screwed up. So we used this block up to this area here but for that whole section we're gonna use this soft block that way we can wrap this around that contour try to keep that as true as possible I'd say that it's looking pretty good. There was a couple spots. We went through the primer in the middle a little bit. So we just hit those tiny little spots with his etching primer. Whether that was the right professional thing to do or not, I don't know. Better than painting on bare metal, I'll tell you that. What I'd like to do is wash this with soap and water with a red scuff pad. But it being in here, I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to rinse it off. I did the best I could with a rag and water. Which I gotta get it out of here because water is your friend and it's also your worst enemy. Because if that blows into our paint job, we won't be too happy. So we'll get rid of any possibilities of that happening and we'll wait for it to dry. We'll unmask this. When we're on taping this, we're pulling that tape away from the paint. We don't want to pull it into it because it, it's so fresh that it might peel some of it off.
little bit of cleaning up to do on some of the edges, but that is no big deal. This turned out great. I'm super happy. Can't wait to see what that dash turns out like. If you like what we're doing so far, hit that like button. Subscribe if you love it. Now I'm from Wisconsin, but I'm not a big sports fan. And this might be red and white, but that's just because it ended up that way. First person that calls this a badger truck gets Daisy Duke's poop delivered to him in a padded envelope. Just saying. I just kidding, I don't care what you call it. I don't care what people think of me or my truck. I mean, have you seen my videos? We have a wax and grease remover in here. And we're gonna spray it on what we're gonna paint here and then wipe it off immediately. And it'll clean up anything that we put on there with our fingers and whatnot. All right, besides cleaning the whole garage and getting rid of all the dust and buying a paint booth, I think we're ready to go. Well, we got a tack cloth here. This is just kind of a sticky cloth. We just wipe down everything with this and it'll it'll pick up any any dust or anything that was been left on here. Those things last a long time, so don't go throwing it away after the first time you use it. I think we're ready. I got the glove box door flipped upside down here. I'm just gonna get the edges of the inside and then we're gonna flip it over so we can paint the outside. The inside of the glove box door, around the inside here, inside the console pocket here, they're actually gonna end up being in a color matched bed liner. Look at this pocket we made. And what we sprayed under the hood with. Right, just like we did with the trim and that gauge cluster, we're gonna do a quick tack coat on everything and let that sit for a bit before we do a full wet coat. So this is why I wanna use a white sealer when we paint this truck. See how bright this button is with one coat? Because it was done over white compared to the one that's done over the gray primer? This is way darker. And we want this to be the brightest red possible without looking orange. And by laying that Viper Red over white, we're gonna be able to achieve that with probably two less coats. And paint is expensive, especially red for some reason. All right, I think we're ready for our first full wet coat. This stuff is great for a smaller project, but anything like this, you only get so many passes with it like this before it has to be vertical. But if you don't have a big compressor or paint guns or know how to use them, this is a good option. All right, it's been a few days and I want to start putting some stuff on this dash because 
I just gotta see what it looks like. Plus, these bottle openers that we put magnets on the other day, painted some of those too. We're gonna do some pinstriping on it. It's kind of a test what we might do with the truck. We got this manual valve block here. It's a Touche from Air Jacks, formerly Little Larry's. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe that they are the same design as these super old school MIC manual valves. On the underside of this console, I welded studs to it and took the paddles off these, these valves so I could back mount it. Normally I would say stay away from teeing off your airlines and doing just two switches. If your left and right bags are sharing air, you really chance a lot of body roll. So for anybody who's seen that sway bar video, now you know why it's so important for me to do one. I'll have a sway bar front and rear, and this isn't a daily driver. This is just a, a fun truck that we're building. I don't know about controlling air ride with your phone and all that. I've been working in automotive electronics my entire life, so I don't really trust them. I like the good old reliable manual valves. And I got the whole plane around with fast air ride out of my system a long time ago. I'm not putting those black paddles back on that valve block either. I got a different idea. We're gonna take it back a little bit. Cause I'm also this old. Switch extensions with the red rubies. Yep, just after I said I don't trust electronics, I'm putting in a push button start in it. I have a backup plan. A hidden backup system, one that'll require an ignition key. So here's an armrest I made. Made it out of wood, I bent it into the contour of the console, made an ABS back on it. At one time I was thinking about using this red swirl velvet for an interior accent material. I'm not. Meh. I'm gonna do suede. We'll have to put a hinge on it. We have a power port going in there, USB outlets. And I don't remember what the third hole was. Oh, it was a voltage gauge. So this, this has a story too. It's a wireless phone charger. I took a wireless phone charger, cut it all up into a bunch of pieces and made that work. I'm still not convinced I'm gonna keep it though. I still might do a floor shifter instead of column. I don't have any air ride gauges yet, so just picture two white face gauges there. I don't have a head unit either. Well, I guess it's time for round three. We gotta make this bracket work so we can get that glove box closed. So according to my precise measurements, our bend here is one finger too tall. We could probably flatten that back out and re-bend it down here. We'll try that. Where were we gonna bend that? Oh yeah, right there. We just went with a coat of black paint on that. Flat black. No reason that bracket needs to be red inside the glove box. I'm also being a little overconfident. I haven't tried that yet. So I'm gonna put this pin switch on it too. It'll turn a light on in the glove box but it's also kind of spring-loaded. It's not kind of spring-loaded, it is spring-loaded. I wanted to do a nicer like magnetic switch, maybe in the factory location, but I have a ton of those and it'll help open the glove box.
but we have three of those bottle openers painted. If you want a piece of this build, I'll put those on the website. We did it. Man, I'm loving that. What do you guys think? If you haven't seen part one of this two video series, it's right there. Otherwise, I'll see you out there.